Hey everyone, it's Megan the Crafty Quinn here and today I'm going to be showing you how to use these Dollar Tree calendars, this one and this one specifically, and how to go from this to this. So I am so excited to finally be using Dollar Tree's 2023 calendars. You may have seen they just dropped a bunch of their brand new, like I said, 2023 calendars. I can't believe they're here already. It's only July <laughs> or August. Oh my gosh, it's only August, but <laughs> they are already moving on to the next year. So let's go with them and use these beautiful calendars and turn them into beautiful artistic masterpieces. So without further ado, let's get on to the crafts. All right, everyone, here are the crafts that I'm going to be making today. I'm so excited to get started. So first you're going to need the Home Sweet Home 2023 12 month Dollar Tree calendar for this craft. This is a galvanized mason jar from Dollar Tree. I love this sign. I love that it is freestanding on its own. And <laughs> sorry if you hear some squeaking in the background. Our new kitten Eddie has just decided to join me in the basement as soon as I started filming. <laughs> this voiceover. <laughs> so I am using some Waverly pumpkin. It's So the color is called pumpkin and it is a chalk paint from Waverly. And I decided to coat the front and the back in this color. And I'm using the Hello Fall from one of the fall months in that calendar that I showed you. And, oh, <laughs> he's trying to get in my lap. And so next I'm just taking some burlap and I'm going to be wrapping that around this mason jar. So this raffia is actually raffia that I stole from another Dollar Tree project. And I love just taking raffia pieces, raffia bows that are already made from Dollar Tree signs and just sticking them on another project. It's so easy. And for the burlap, I just cut that once I had it wrapped around the mason jar and I just used a little bit of glue for that and that held it in place. And for this, I actually decided to go ahead and just hot glue this down to the sign as well. And I figured if I hot glued it, it would maybe come off a little bit easier if I want to use this on something else, but that is yet to be determined. But that's really all that's needed for this craft. And I decided to leave the top of the mason jar just as it is, because I do love the galvanized metal piece. And here's a quick and easy DIY with one of the calendar pieces. So one of my subscribers reached out to me on Instagram and said this sign she made with her daughter was inspired by my calendar, Pumpkin Craft from last year. And her sign has actually inspired me to use this boo y'all sign for a craft. So thank you, Amber Costello, for sharing your lovely sign with me. And if any of you ever recreate one of my crafts and want to tag me or show me, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. And you could be featured in a video next. Thank you again, Amber, and I'm so excited to show you what I came up with using this sign design. So this is a blank pumpkin cutout piece from Dollar Tree, and like I showed you, that was from another calendar now, and I, I really do love this. Boo, y'all. <laughs> it's so adorable, and I just love that it's on this like natural wood piece. Interesting color choice that they decided to put this with blue, but I really like the ombre look that this has going on and we're going to use that in this sign a little bit later on. It is not a perfect fit. You know that this pumpkin wood sign is very wide, so there are going to be some wood wood parts that are going to stick out on either side. So everything that is not covered by the sign is going to get this plaster color paint. Now, I think I either used white by Waverly or plaster, but it looks like I might've used white for this. But this is a just a white chalk paint. And I am also going to be using this cute little ghost because I mean, booyah, right? <laughs> so I immediately thought of putting a ghost with this sign. So I am just painting this white. Yeah, so I, I, I guess I did use white. So this is white by, by Waverly. 
And so I just painted it up to about there because I realized I needed to spackle the hole in that ghost sign and to be able to cover it up with the paint later. So the edges that are not going to be covered by this calendar piece, I am just taking my paint and I'm just gonna color them in white and that is really important for a step later on. We just need some kind of, you know, blank color for this. So next, I'm just preparing the pumpkin for the calendar to stick to this. I am not using Mod Podge today for any of the calendar pieces. It is not needed and I don't like how the calendars look when I use Mod Podge with them. I just, it, it just, it gives me too many problems. <laughs> Oftentimes more headaches. So a glue stick is just fine. This is just an Elmer's Craft, bo craft Bond glue stick. This is what I typically use in a lot of my crafts like this and it works just fine, but I like to be extra careful and glue the object and the sign. So this just required very, very little tracing. I didn't include any video footage of me tracing this out because I mean, I felt like it, it took two seconds because the, the wood sign took up the majority of the, of the sign. So, all the little excess pieces that I could not cut off with scissors, I just highly recommend you use your finger sander because it will give you the closest cut you can ever get from, from even scissors. So this is perfect. It gives you the perfect fit and you do not have any pieces sticking out after you use your finger sander on the edge like that. So next, we are going to be using our finger sander for a lot of the rest of this project. Now here, you're going to make this calendar sign fade into the wood piece. And I love that this is ombre because I feel like that makes it look even cooler. But you are literally just going to take the finger sander and just, just sand over it. And then what's great about the calendar piece is the calendar then bleeds into the white that you painted it. And that is why it's so important to have a light color when you're doing this. Now, I am no expert at all. I am just a crafter that loves to experiment with things and see how they turn out. And this was just a total experiment. Wasn't sure how it was going to look, but you know what? I, I was like, let's give it a try and let's just see how it turns out. So then it kind of looks like this was meant to be and it looks like everything's kind of bleeding in together as if it was made that way. So. And ended up looking really cool and i had already done that to the one side so now i'm just doing the other side but i'm telling you it looked awesome once this was finished so next we're going to put our ghost on there and i just took some black um car um, construction paper from uh dollar tree actually and I just glued that to the back of this ghost just so you could clearly see the eyes and the mouth of the ghost. And then we're just gonna hot glue it down. And this was one of the best final touches I, I put on the sign. Now, for this, I just threw a bunch of ribbon pieces together. I got all of this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. They were a buck 50 each on sale. They were 50% off. It was perfect because I am very much on a budget right now and I need to keep expenses low because our air conditioner just gave out and we have to buy a whole new one. So <laughs> this is exactly why I'm shopping at Dollar Tree. I am on a budget. <laughs> if I want fall decor, it's gotta be cheap. So I just try to make stuff look high end. And this is how it turned out. And I love how the ribbon looks just like the ellipsis at the bottom there. <laughs> so this is absolutely one of my favorites. So this is the calendar you're going to need for this next craft. It is technically that one's called the farmhouse calendar. I just realized that. <laughs> so you're going to need three of these home signs. This was kind of a newer kind of sign that they have out in the Dollar Tree 
crafters square section and the color that I'm painting on this first one is that same color I used in the beginning which is Waverly's pumpkin color. Now it took definitely a few coats to cover this thing completely and the calendar piece there is is just one of those little preview ones that they have on, on the back of every single calendar. So I cut that out from the calendar that I showed you at the beginning and that is just going to be the centerpiece of this. But in the meantime, I'm using these half beads and they are going in the corner of every single, well, corner of this house. I and mean, we're gonna do that on the others as well, but not the whole thing and you'll see what I mean. So for these, because they have, you know, the chalkboard kind of feel to them, it definitely makes it difficult, but I just figured with the color that I wanted to paint it, it needed a light color underneath. So that is what I was doing there. I was putting the Waverly plaster color on and this burgundy color. So originally I used true burgundy from folk art that you see there in the left hand corner. Well, that was way too dark and practically red. So I decided to mix Waverly plaster with folk art true burgundy. And that's how I got this amazing burgundy color on this one sign that you see here. And you can even see in the bottom corner here, that is what I did. I mixed it together in that little tray there. And that's how I got this color. And <laughs> I had to keep adding the true burgundy to the plaster color because it kept looking like Pepto-Bismol. And then I just kept adding and kept adding and kept adding. And then finally got this amazing color. And because I, I mean, I didn't, look like I didn't feel like going out and looking for this color so I was like no I think I can make this myself and the green is actually moss by Waverly so like I said you're gonna put the half beads in all of the little corners but it's not needed for the inner corners because this pumpkin house is going right on top in the center I this was well, another one of my favorites. Honestly, I loved all of the crafts from today's video. Like I couldn't, I couldn't pick a favorite myself. <laughs> so next is just simply to secure them. And it's it really does not require a lot. I mean, hot glue was enough to keep all of these together. And my kitten has joined me again in my lap. So you might hear him purring. <laughs> so after those two are glued together, then we just need to put some glue down for the pumpkin one to go in front on top of these two. I just decided to Put some hot glue like this. I figured that would be enough to keep it in place. And it really does hold well. This really is a simple craft. It's just the painting that really takes a while and making sure you can get the paint in every corner. Now this is raffia that I just doubled up and tied together and then I held it together with some hot glue. And then just like that, that just goes in the very center there of the pumpkin sign, pumpkin color sign. And that's really it to finish up this craft. More of the Craft Bond Elmer's glue stick was used to put this down there. and then just trying to make sure I center it. <laughs> it does hold, it just right away, it's like, no. <laughs> so I kind of had to hold it down a little bit, but I absolutely love the way this turned out and just so simple. I have these half beads linked in my Amazon store and I have them linked below in this video if you wanted to pick up some for yourself. So next we're going to use this farmhouse calendar again for the fourth and final craft of today's video. So you may have seen me use this sign in my last fall video. Well, I picked up another one because I had an awesome idea and I was like, okay, 
I, I, I need to go back and get another one. So I did. So for this, it has, gl it has glitter on it. I used my finger sander. I literally just used my finger sander and held it outside because I didn't want to deal with all the glitter getting all over my house. So I just did it outside. <laughs> so like I said, this is the calendar you're, gonna, you're going to use and thankful, grateful, and blessed is the one that we want for this. This is absolutely like a November kind of calendar. And I'm, I believe it was for November exactly actually. <laughs> so this is, this is going to fit perfectly here. And it really is almost a perfect fit on this uh, cutting board. I really didn't, I really felt like I didn't have to cut a ton. Like I could actually just hold it right on top of the cutting board and just cut around it easily. So here I'm just trying to map out where I want this to go. But first I was just making sure to cut off the piece at the very top that has the, the hanger in it. So like I said, very little cutting needed on this one. I just held my scissors there and just held it against it and that was enough to really cut it into a decent shape for this. So once this is all cut out, then we're just going to secure it to the sign. So I love how this fit almost perfectly. I mean, it was just really the bottom edges that were kind of rough looking. So we're going to use the same technique here and just get rid of the excess on the sides. And that, and that is done by just kind of holding it against the edge and then you can get close shave on this, so to speak. So here I was trying to do the same technique that I just did with the booyah sign and I'm trying to make this bleed into the plaster color chalk paint and see what what effect it comes up with. Didn't really do as much as the booyah sign did, but we're going to maybe cover that up later. <laughs> Not cover it up so much, but just kind of make it seem as though it's blending more. I will say that the edges of this, maybe the corner pieces look the best, but I mean, it really does look like it's at least all one sign, but it didn't have the cool kind of like color bleeding effect that the other one had. And maybe because the other one was blue and this one isn't, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think it still, make, it still made the edges look cool. So next we're going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color Fawn. This is my favorite one for distressing lately. I don't know why, but I just, I love the color that it comes up with. And so I'm just taking a stencil brush and typically I just draw three X's to get the excess off before doing that. And then it kind of leaves like the perfect amount left over. And that is the trick that I love to use for distressing. Just make sure you get the paint off of it by drawing three X's first. See, I just, I love just the color of this with just a few like simple swipes of the stencil brush. It looks so vintage already. I love it. And this is why I use this color. <laughs> 
and a chibi brush will work just fine. I just couldn't find mine at the moment. I think any paint, any paintbrush really, any just general paintbrush should work fine. So I kind of did just a light distressing first. I did kind of all of just the edges and just wanted to see how that would look. And then, I don't know, I kept, once I started, I just kept going. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're, we're going all in now. <laughs> There's no turning back. <laughs> so that is exactly what I ended up doing. <laughs> I ended up distressing the entire thing, and hopefully you guys like it as much as I do. <laughs> so here's me lightly distressing on top of the words and everything. It just, the reason I did that is because once I had done all of the edges, it looked odd to me that the rest of it was so kind of bright and clean looking when the rest of it was so vintage and, you know, old looking. So um, I just wanted to go over it for consistency purposes, really. And then I, I ended up really liking how, how it turned out after all. So this was the end result. And I have to say, I really love this one too. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Here's all of the crafts from today's video. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Instagram. Check me out on TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest. If you want to watch more videos, check them out here on the left. And thank you guys so much again for watching. It's always appreciated. Have a great rest of your weekend.